Y'all, everyone, welcome to the newest episode of the Some Ordinary Podcast. I am here with my lovely co-hosts, as always, except for last week, my bad, uh, Muda and Caleb, absolute legends. Hey! And our guest, for the first time, L.S. Mark. Oh, what's up? The legendary mind behind making fun of Rick and Morty incest. True, yeah. The only thing I've done. The highlight of my career. That's how I know him. He's the Rick and Morty incest guy no he also he also crapped on sonic frontiers for being a apparently mid-tier mid tier game <laughs> mid. which is not okay yo it's so funny whenever i see a video that's like an hour long reviewing something and it doesn't say in the title if it's good or terrible i know they're just gonna say it's mid that's i'm so <laughs> used to like putting my opinion in the title and people just clicking on the video and like so I, for like a week i was like what title can i give this that doesn't actually say how i feel about it you just like sonic frontiers the good and bad <laughs> I, I made a sonic movie 2 review uh back in april and i was like sonic movie 2 is like not very good or something like that and like twitter was having a f- feel that with it so i was like i'm not repeating this with the sonic fans again okay wait wait, wait. just repeat what you said twitter was having a field day yeah. tell me one thing they're happy about yeah. i know oh, yeah. Elon Musk, they love him <laughs> <laughs> they love Elon Musk on there. Yeah, I heard, I heard some of the people working there just love the hell out of him. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ligman and Johnson? <laughs> Wait, what? Ligma and Johnson? Yeah, he took a photo with them, dude. He mean I know, up. yeah. Dude, did you did you see the employee that got fired, apparently? Like, he was just, like, yeah. making, like, yeah. he was shitting on his own app. The employee corrects him, and it's like, you're fired. I'm like, yeah. damn. <laughs> dude. Kind of, I, it, it's funny how like you know you go onto the website and it's like so it's like I feel like the only reason people align with him is because like he's just their guy at the moment. It's like dude, he's it's like he's I don't know he, he's just a, he's he's been a weird guy. I've never seen somebody burn a lot of his goodwill in like a few years um, as much as Elon Musk has. Because before he used to be like a memer to me, like ah oh, this guy's just a rich billionaire. Now it's just like damn. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, he's trying to I, f- everything up. Know, seems I, like I, yeah. troll. I think I I give him more slack than I think most of the other people I talk to because he's just some rich guy and he's like, you know what? Okay, I'll buy Twitter. He I do the same. If I was a billionaire, I wouldn't care. He can do whatever he yeah. wants. Who cares? Okay, so I he mean, made I, Twitter I, I, worse. Twitter wasn't that great. It's not like you ruined the bastion of beauty in this world. Okay? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's he, he just Did he made make the it worse already? A little shittier. Has it I changed at all? Really? Dude, For I, me, just, just, I feel like it's the I same. Just, he ruined my verification I, I, tab. Okay, that's the only thing that changed true, for me. True. Literally, that's it. That's such a pretentious thing to fucking say. It's such a yeah, pretentious. F- thing you nux. <laughs> you nux. You know you what? You pretentious think... PNG. <laughs> you, know, you and Keemstar have a lot in common, Caleb. <laughs> I, I think I can say for a lot of like people, I just love watching the shit from the sidelines. I love Me good too. train wreck. The like, dumpster fire, if you will. Yeah. I think anybody I taking this too seriously should just like stop. Like just just listen, you, you don't have money put into it. Just sit back, relax, watch the nuclear bombs go off. Like it's the same okay, thing I say. Like, you know, we can make starts, this week, Mr. Mr. Oh, tr- <laughs> true. I can't, I can't. No, I'm just saying, like, okay, listen, anytime I see Doom posting like World War Three and, and everyone's like what are you going to do if it actually happens? I'm like, brother, I'm driving dead. to the to the drop zone, okay? Like, right dead center of the bomb drop zone. I'm setting up a chair. I'm cracking open a really? corona. Yo, I'm not going to live in a post-apocalyptic world. You think I got bottle caps in my house? F*** that. I'm going incinerated. <laughs> You're low on dude. funds. I'm under. Like, have you ever, you ever used Nuke Maps, Mark? No, I haven't. What is that? Okay, so Nuke Maps is like this website you can use here. I'll, 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 I'll show I'll show it for everyone. It's the, it's the perfect and for everyone because uh, we have the ability. You to You don't do know. That. Before we started, Muda just showed us all Rub Maps. Now Nuke yeah, Maps. It's uh, very con- it's it's very similar to Rub Maps. maps very similar. Yeah, There's a lot exactly. in common. If a nuke is coming, where so you can is, get your last bastion of fun. Yeah. So this is the website right here. Let's say you live in like I don't know, like Dallas, Texas. Okay. All right. Let's say let's say you go to Dallas. Now right here. If you decide to pick, like, the highest yield, let's just pick the largest Pakistani weapon tested. Detonate that, okay? You see, everything in that center section right there, like the city hall, I'm right there. Because according to this, that's a fireball radius. You're done. Like, it's oh, end game, boys. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, don't even, you don't even get to think about the pain. You're already gone. But see, like, if you're all the way out here in, like, you know, like this area, maybe the orange you're you're in a lot of pain, okay? Like it's not you're not living the best life, okay? Super mutants are gonna come in, radiation is gonna take gone. you. It's exactly it's gonna suck. Yep. 
that's that's where I get into. All right, like that's why anytime somebody asks me, it's like anytime the Doomer scrolling comes, I'm like, bro, I don't even care. You should just go right under it. Be the. And, and I'm looking forward to surviving in a nuclear apocalypse, post apocalyptic wasteland. Oh, really? Absolutely, yeah. Would you start your own cult and everything too, like your own settlement? I'm already working on it. What do you think that big project he's sinking all first. this money into? <laughs> Bro, you don't understand. Exactly, yeah. First, <laughs> he's, he's Oompi would not be the first city. Texan to do that. No, no. Oompi would not. I, I Mark, might be the last, though. During, Mark, what would you do die, during, during the post? You, you I would know, rather like me, you'd, I would right, you'd rather, rather be yeah. under there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. You've got dreams. five minutes to make this decision. No, I, I can make it right now. Have you ever, like, I, I've had many dreams where, like, it's it's the apocalypse is happening, and I like look over, and the bombs will drop. Uh, and every time I'm just like, you know what? I'm fine with this. This this is okay. I'd rather die than, yeah, I'm than comfy, doing this. Get a beer. Spend the last five minutes thinking about life. Like, come on now. Yeah. What what is your what is your preferred apocalypse? Okay, like nuke stuff. That's like quick and easy. What about zombies? What about like oh, that, aliens? That's even better, dude. All zombies. those are way better. <laughs> yeah. How is a zombie <clears throat> better? It's so sick. I would love that. Like, at least there's still infrastructure. With, with a zombie apocalypse, you can still go to the grocery store, you know? As long as the zombies don't don't kill everyone at, like, power plants. But with a nu- nuclear apocalypse, you have to learn how to grow food. And indoors, too. You have sure, to learn how to, zombie like... zombie apocalypse, like, makes every situation, like, ten times more stressful for the rest of your life. There's always yeah. that fear. True. That they'll pop by. Yeah, it's just... It's just... I feel like it would be easier to just live in general, though. And you could build walls. That's good. They yeah. Are you know, true. They work true. on zombies. Yeah, walls are super effective well, like, on zombies. Well, That's what it does in the new Pokemon well, game. The wall type is super effective on the zombie type. type. Super effective on undead well, type. Well, like, okay, what if what if we had a zombie apocalypse, but we were really good at like quarantining and everything and all that shit, and like zombies still existed, but we had them like penned up and like in like specific zones, and we tested on them. Yeah, we had a normal life, but it's just like, oh, guys, this part of New York, just like we have to wall this off because that's where zombies reproduce and do all that, all, all their zombie things. That would be an interesting kind of world. I feel like you could come back from a zombie apocalypse like yeah. versus yeah. like bombs or like viral, like biological agents, like in mustard gas, like just seeping it. Like that would be a different thing. All right. That would zombie might be because Mark is right. It's like it makes everything te- got to drop your kids yeah. off to school and zombie zombies running across the field. Not happening, all right? Got to go True. to work. Zombies running across in the subway. Yep. Not happening, all right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, we are. Like Take goodbye to public transport. No, not not really. I mean, the, I, I would assume the bus would be the safest option. You think, you think they wouldn't be training the bus driver to run over a few of these things every once in a while? Come I on just now. feel like if it's a virus, if it's a virally, Dude, it's like... There would be a mask mandate and everything would be fine. Nobody, <laughs> nobody would follow it. True. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> it worked really well <laughs> here in America. <laughs> goodbye Europe, though, I tell you what. Europe wouldn't last you long. You know, when I, when, when I was in Texas during, like, the pandemic, no one even thought about that <laughs> option. They were like, uh, brother. <laughs> like, I, I remember when I was in the airport and I was walking one one. They, they, like, pretty much forced me to, yeah, there you go. They forced me to, they, that's exactly what he said. At least you could defend yourself against this virus. Yeah. Yeah, at least you can. You but, like, when I was in Texas. Particles. You might be able too to. Too small, I tried. You might be able to if you try. Oh, actually, no, that's medical misinformation. They're too small, I tried. Out. Oh, freak. anyways, though, but like, <laughs> yeah, I know you're, you're getting us screwed over on this one, dude. Jeez, we're already like f- ten, less than 10 minutes into the entire episode. Dude, why do we way. do this? We could have talked about Sonic, Pokemon, Rick and Morty incest. But we no. could. We could. We can talk about how excited we are for Pokemon that's coming out as nearly 30 year old men. <laughs> what what are I played the new Scarlet Violet thing and I'll be real. It is the most disappointing experience I've ever jumped into. Like I don't I kind of expected a lot from it. I really did. I really, really actually expected something. The most something disappointing out of ever, like worse than Sun and Moon. Impossible. Dude, it's just boring. Like, I'm sorry. I get that the audience for Pokemon are children, but even as a kid, I wasn't this inept, you know? Like, I knew how to play a video game, right? Like, I swear, they made this game literally, like, I think the pulse has to be optional. Like, I don't even think you have to be alive to finish this game. Like, as long as you can put the Joy-Con in somebody's hand, you'll finish it. It's actually that easy. It's un- unashamedly easy, is what it is. It's just not, like, a Pokemon game. That's your main issue with it? Yeah, it's just too easy. Like, it's, like, one of those games where, like, there's no challenge to it. They've got this big-ass open world. That literally just does not look interesting. It's like Breath of the Wild on like severely low settings. Like that's all it yeah. is. And um, they they I don't know. There's just nothing. Like they've got they've got like a few story paths to go down, but like none of it ever leads anywhere. It's it's just one of the most like 
it's it's like it's a better looking version of that sword and shield game you know like it's like they yeah. made pokemon for the switch but it, it literally just feels like a 3ds game or something it just doesn't even feel like a, a true proper pokemon title i just don't know how people can be so excited for it at all like especially when it comes to like the fan base or keep buying it really like i just I, I feel like there's a big problem i feel like it's not a game freak problem it's the consumer problem they're too stupid they won't stop yeah it seems like they can get away with putting out anything and people will still buy it i think it's similar to sonic in a way we were talking earlier where they don't really care about the quality as long as it has pokemon on it you know that's all i know about the the previous game sword and shield uh i just saw people bitching on twitter all the time about other people bitching about the graphics saying it's like not a big deal and that'll like all be fixed when the game comes out, which it isn't fit, and it's never fixed when the game comes out. No, n- nothing ever gets it. like. It's one of those things where like you think about Pokemon, it's not like a fucking indie game, right? It's not like oh guys, three people are working on this, bro. It's one of the most profitable studios in the world, it's and they the cannot biggest be franchise asked. in the world. Yeah, right? well, yeah, by in terms, well, when you include because well, the logic is like you have to include Five from Twilight. No, no, Twilight is much, <laughs> much, much less rich. <laughs> Look, I like Twilight, bro. I'd kill dude. for a Twilight video game. I'm not joking with you, okay? Like, imagine you would? having. I would. Dude, could you imagine being a werewolf and having to try navigating <laughs> high school? Joking. Are you fucking kidding? Bro? I was that kid's joking. awesome. <laughs> bro, bro, it, bro, I, I you love. Know, it would, like, if Twilight gets a video game, it would be like a dating sim, right? It'd be like, exactly, oh, a yeah. dating sim with like social stealth and like imagine, dude, if they had a Twilight game, the best thing would be like Persona mixed with Hitman or some shit, you know? Like you're just a vampire, like secretly like infecting other people while trying to live high school. That's a pretty sick game concept, okay? I, I'm just saying, it, it's more unique than Call of Duty. Like, let's shoot up people fucking seventeen again, okay? Like, let's be real here. What? Yeah, Call of Duty. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's a more unique simulator. You know what? You know what I said. Because... He knows he's just yeah. annoying you. I know, but like that—that's that's where it comes into. But it's like what Mark said. It's like when it comes to Sonic, like, yo, you could literally shit out anything on the disc, and people are gonna buy it. Like, it's just one of those things. But like this year, yeah, no. Sonic wasn't Go bad. It was no, bad. it wasn't bad at all. But um, like every year we get like like last year. It's the ported Sonic Colors Ultimate from the Wii to like all modern consoles, and it came out with like literally like seizure inducing bugs and pe- people still didn't care they were like oh well it only activates sometimes so you know you should still buy it though it's, <laughs> search it's in general like warning you might get elliptic sometime oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no that, that's that's my thing with like the sonic franchise too it's like this year felt like they put some effort but they always release shit like sonic um it's always the 3d stuff that's like a really big hit or miss like they just can never get that shit done right but i don't think they have to because yeah. it's like especially when your franchise is geared towards children like who who actually who's looking at the quality of it anymore right it's not like your rockstar games where like if you make something inferior compared to your last game then you get crapped on right like if gta 6 is, it is geared yeah. towards children though pokemon oh yeah oh the, the i mean i mean uh, like sonic there's there's like uh I'm pretty sure there's a whole statistic about how most people that buy the new Pokemon games are people that have played previous Pokemon games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think it's the, you know, 25-year-olds that grew up on Pokemon that get Mm -hmm. the nostalgia trip from buying the new game. It's interesting because, like, when it comes to, like, the children in my family, none of them ever talk about Pokemon. It's always, like, Roblox and shit. Like, none of them have ever gotten into, like, Pokemon or Sonic, like... I, I know that even, like, the kid shows, like, so, like I've never seen them play a Sonic game. I've never seen them play a Pokemon game, right? Like, hell, a lot of them don't even have, like, Switches anymore. They're all just gaming on their iPads and, like, iPhones. And, like, if they have a gaming console, it's, like, a PlayStation. And they're playing the same games like we are. Like, my, uh, like my aunt's kids, they just play Call of Duty at this point, like, Fortnite or Warzone or whatever. Like, so they're playing the same games that, like, adults are. They're not playing the games oriented for children. So, yeah, I don't understand, like, why they're making these games for kids when it doesn't seem like children actually care about no, buying yeah. them. Kid, kids want to kids wanna play games that think they like older kids are playing, you know? Not, yeah. like, I, mean, not I, think, I think to an extent, they, they want to have their cake and eat it, right? They, they mm-hmm. market it as a nostalgia trip for uh, the older generation to pick it up, but they also want it accessible because they still have a pipe dream that they're going to get the whole next generation into it as well. Like, yeah. for example, you know, every single Pokemon game has like, a five-minute tutorial of saying, you know, this world is inhabited by mythical creatures called Pokemon. They come yeah. in all shapes and sizes. Here's how you use a Pokeball. You know, like, they all have, like, the really long intro. Like, you probably mm. never heard of Pokemon before, right? Like, they, they want to have their cake and eat it. Yeah. 
They're so no, dumb. It, Am it, I right, guys? It, you know, you're absolutely right. It really this is. This is Caleb's commentary. I don't play Pokemon or any Nintendo stuff. I have yeah. no idea. I'm just trying to interject and be part of the podcast. No, dude, I just play Metro. I just play like one Nintendo game, and that's like Metroid. I don't even give a shit about Zelda anymore at this point, too, because it's like, man, all those like modern. I've never played any of them. Dude, anything modern, I think I can just say that anything with like an open world these days, I like pass on because I just, I don't have time for <gasps> open world How games. How dare anymore. you say that when Elden Ring was so good? Okay, Elden Haven't Ring. Haven't you ever played really Halo Infinite? You've. Yeah, that's not really an open world oopy. That's like maybe like it's totally open world. Yeah, and it's, it's like great. Yeah, yeah, like a small chunk of the map. I guess we're gonna classify that as open world shit. Twi- Twitter's my favorite open world video game today. Dude, Twitter's cha- dude. Twitter is so fluid. Like ever since Elon Musk bought it, it's like a new bombshell happens every day. I just love watching it from the sidelines, man. Like we're all losing check marks apparently. Like he said in a few months, and I'm like, damn, I can't yep. wait to see all the. Now it's just gonna be people that pay eight bucks for Twitter Blue, and it's like, all right, <laughs> shit, go. I for think it, we're I still guess. gonna get the official thing, right? No. Uh- all the people who have sent their IDs off. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, if he's going to take away the verification badge, they should remove your identification data from the servers because um, no reason that they should hold on to that, right? Like, it, it really. But, uh, yeah. So something that I haven't seen anyone talking about, interestingly enough, in regards to this verification thing, people think the Lord and Peasant system is gone from, like, um, when it comes to recognizing people as verified. If you go to your followers... Like, who's following you? You know, you have two sections. You have the all section and the verified section for all your verified followers. Yeah. yeah. That's all people verified because they're notable, not through Twitter Blue. Wait, doesn't yeah. show it for I think that? there's still going to be a distinction. I don't think he's going to ruin... There's got to be, like, it just doesn't make any sense to do that. I don't know. I don't know, man. I Like, at the end of the day, like, I, I'm pretty sure the dude did not want to buy the service at all. I mean, they're trying, to, they're trying to back out of the deal so hard, and now he's just got to, like, make it profitable. I don't know. It, it's it's interesting to me because, like, the whole, like, Twitter verify, at least to me, it doesn't really make any, like, sense for me to go out and buy it. I don't really care. Um, you know, it's not like what it does is allow you to make any money off. Like if you could make AdSense or like any kind of money on the side with Twitter, maybe it's worth it to jump into the system. Um, if it actually drove people to my videos, maybe I would consider it. But like, usually I notice that Twitter accounts for like maybe 1%, if anything, if I directly link everything else is through like an entirely different, uh, method. I don't know. That's just my like whole thing on it. I'm, I'm so like, I'm so like not I don't actually really even care about this whole situation. And it's just one of those things where it's like the amount of people bitching about paying eight bucks or not. I'm like, if it's, if you really feel like that can check that vanity symbol is so important, $8 a month, isn't the end of the world. Go for it, buddy, go crazy. But for most people, I don't think they care. It used to be one of those things that they apply to your account. It was like, Oh cool. This guy got it. They were notable. Now that everyone can get it, the value literally just dropped to like zero for that whole like check. So I, I feel like it's funny for the people that paid like ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Like those are the real dumbasses in the situation. If you pay that much for a fucking little check, you might as well have bought some dog shit NFT at that point, dumbass. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, you oh my fucking God, idiot. Dude. Everyone who did that. <laughs> Caleb, why are you like this? It's like why? <laughs> I don't remember the last time I heard an actual opinion come out of you, bro. <laughs> I mean, I just said that I think we're going to keep the fucking, the official symbol will be the, will be the new verified yeah. check mark. Yeah. The blue, because he even changed it to blue. It's not even yeah. the same thing anymore. I, dude. Like, I see people like all the time bitching about like every day, I constantly twi- uh, bitching about Elon Musk with Twitter, but I never actually noticed any real differences in yeah. the site or like when I'm no. using it. I don't get it. Yeah. No, I, I think, it's not I that think bad. I see You're his like... tweets everywhere. Yeah. Like, You'll know, yeah. well, I, I, I think for some reason he promotes himself. I, think I, do, most I, I would do that if I was him. I would yeah. do that. Yeah, that I mean, every you pay time someone billion, opens you might Twitter, as well, right? Yeah. No, nah, it's one of those things where I'm like, you just give it a fucking chance, all right? Like, see how things are going to go because it's interesting how you get people jumping into like Twitter is going to like rampantly allow misinformation and everything. And it's funny that people say that when even on Elon's own tweets, like the Twitter employees are like fact checking him. I'm like, if he's not firing them for that, I think we're kind of okay. Like, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem like super serious. Like, it just feels like a lot of hoopla. And at the end of the day, like, just chill out, maybe wait a couple months, see if it's still there. And if it is, eh, maybe whatever he's doing is working. And if it isn't, whatever, no big loss. We can just switch to, like, the community tab on YouTube, all right? Like, shit, <laughs> something. I think it'll work out. Yeah. I think it'll work out. I don't think people are going to leave, leave en masse. I just, I don't see it happening. Like, 
unless it true yeah. unless it turns into like fucking 4chan or some shit like straight up like poll i don't think it's gonna be like i i don't think it's i don't think he'll let it happen i, I just don't think he'll let it turn into like literally like b okay like is what i'm saying no, but maybe we could be like one. this shit's the end of the world like i remember <laughs> yeah. youtube everyone thought youtube was going under because of like the copper shit or uh yeah i remember that day yeah oh the new tab that you have to click for oh this video is for under 18s um shit like that mm-hmm. like uh ever, everyone acted like that was the end of the world but youtube's still you know still kicking so i don't know i think in a couple of months everyone's just gonna like forget about it slowly yeah like, if not... you really don't like elon musk owning it that much you can just, you just leave you know yeah, I mean, Elon's just like an indifferent guy. Like, I think Elon's just one of those people where, like, sometimes he'll say stupid shit, and it's fun to laugh at him for stupid shit, but it's like, whatever. Like, I just, I look at Elon the same way I look at any other big billionaire. I'm very indifferent. Like, yeah. to me, it's like Jeff Bezos. Like, if Jeff started shit posting, I wouldn't like him anymore or hate him anymore. You know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, whatever. It's a rich guy that's doing shit with his money. You know, whatever. I want to hear but- him laugh more. I feel like he should have a reaction channel where he just watches like little videos on TikTok and he's just. <laughs> See, I feel like Elon would be relatable if he had like a fucking try not to laugh challenge every like, you know, f- couple oh, of yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, Dude, something. Elon Musk I like reacts Elon's to unusual dude. memes. Episode 132. Nah, he's a, yeah. they're, they're, it's, it's weird seeing people who are like, Elon's going to like bring Nazis or everything onto the internet. I'm like, guys, chill the, chill the f*** out for a little minute. The guy understands that he's got to like be pretty center field for the most part, okay? And like, just give it a little break, all right? Like, chill out, relax. If, you, if you're going to quit the internet or Twitter or whatever, just switch to the other, whatever the Mastodon service kicked in. It doesn't matter. At the end of the world, like, people are still going to use a service. People are not going to. It's not that big of a deal, all right? It's not like a deal. If you, It really just filters out who's, like, super terminally online and who isn't. Like, my whole thing with the internet is, like, after I upload a video or I'm done talking to a few friends, I just sign off. Like, I don't even bother touching the computer. I don't bother touching social media apps. I'm literally, like, outside and doing my own thing. You know what I mean? Like, living life. Because I feel like that's that's pretty much... You have to have, like, a cutoff point between social media and whatnot. And I think it's really hard, obviously, if your job is, like, a YouTuber or you work in social media. You just have to have, like, a, that, that fine cutoff point in your day. Otherwise, this shit's just going to consume you. And living terminally online is just, like, one of the worst ways to be. Like, you don't have a life of yourself outside. You don't even get to do anything. You just are stuck perpetually in this, like, tunnel of, like, hate. And, and that's it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. The way I see it, okay, so Elon Musk ruined Twitter and nothing of value was lost. It's like, what do I care? It's Twitter, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's like people yeah. were bitching also, about also Kanye like West the it. other few days. Uh, like, Kanye West was, like, being bitched about everything. Just what kind of, what did Kanye do? Yeah, I've been keeping up with it. Oh, man. Well, um, Kanye had a lot of things to say about <laughs> God's chosen people is all I'm going to put out there. There's Kanye a, there's doesn't a... like Jewish people. Yeah. Uh-oh. yeah. He's Well, it's not yeah. that he doesn't like them. It's that Jewish people have a distinct control over certain key sectors that, as you know, Kanye has a, has a, has a holding in, notably media, finance. All right, a couple sectors. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he, Kanye, he's trying to release a new album, bro, okay? That's all he does. Every time he does uh, shit like this, it's literally hyping up something that he's yeah. doing. That's all it is. Except uh, he he basically f***ed himself a little bit because he lost, like, I think the, you know, the Yeezys or whatever? Yeah, I yeah, heard about they him dropped losing them. that, actually. Yeah, so, like, he was like, I can say anti-Semitic shit and Adidas wouldn't drop me. Less than 24 hours later, Adidas does, in fact, drop actually their most profitable, like, venture, which is kind of like a, you know, it's like when you, when you, like, uh, you know, when you can identify if something's performative or not, that wasn't performative. Like, Adidas lost a ton of money on that, but uh, they have to stick by it because obviously you're playing chicken with a man who's like, they won't fire me, even if I say the most racist shit imaginable. No, you're fired. Like, you're out. But, uh, yeah, that was... um. That was the Kanye moment. I, dude, every week, I, f- I feel like this year, like this decade alone is just like an event after an event. All right. Like big events. Yeah. It's surrounded by like the most. Tiring. It is. It re- like we're in 2023 almost and shit is not stopping. Like we literally were just talking about like fucking missile fragments and like missiles being launched. I'm like, dude, just relax for a little. Yeah, nuclear war, world. bud. Nuclear war. Dude. Shit. I, I don't know, man. I, I The doom scrolling since 2019 has just made me so numb to everything, man. Like, I just, like, if the world's going to fucking end, 
it better end in the most spec like we better have shit like ragnarok happen okay i better have like motherfuckers on like flying unicorns come in and like new cap the country you know what i mean like something <laughs> exciting at least that's the like, dream yeah, like, it's like, none of, none of this, like, we're gonna die to, like, some pandemic or, like, some nuclear... No, I want, like, some crazy, some biblical shit, you know, something that you'd read in, like, mm -hmm. the Bible the or whatever, like, exactly, like, people floating to the heavens, something cool, mm -hmm. man. Like, I'm sitting here... I can the see most... that happening. Dude, we're sitting in the most boring fucking times. It's like, you know, you know all this cool, like, futuristic shit in the day, like, in today's day and age? We don't even have shit like flying cars or whatever, or, like, body modifications, or, like, we're jumping from, like, building to building, like, cyberpunk. No, we just have absolutely boring shit these days. And none, none of it, like... Little sad boxes. That's all we got. Well, yeah, we, we literally are just sitting attached to, like, you know, cell phone devices. And, yeah, n n nothing exciting. Like... I, I was expecting at least by 2023, we would have like phones injected into our eyeballs, you know, like constantly being attached to our feet, like True. wake up and just like, I, I, I thought we'd have stuff like that, but now we have like Mark Zuckerberg telling us to put on fucking headsets and talk to each other in digital have a hotel. Not, not my, I not my idea Andrew of the future. Tate to be president by now. Don't never say never brother. <laughs> you might be. <laughs> Is that a say the impression? Hmm? That would be surprised. What about what about Andrew Tate, Caleb? I said, was that were you doing an impression of me? No, maybe. You're, Wait, you're every the only every person. southern accent is just an impression of you. Yeah, I've never heard you do one before, and I've interviewed Andrew Tate. And yeah, what about, what about really close president? friends? We're really close friends. Are you? Are you I still believe it. Can I say you make a good? No. <laughs> Is that what people were getting pissed at Mr. Beast for recently, playing poker with him? Is that the guy? Yeah. Wait, he played poker with Andrew Tate? He played poker with that. him? That's hilarious. Baller. I see that. Double check this. It's baller. Do you guys I mean, think Jimmy's based in Red Pilled? Jimmy's based Yes, I think in he's very, very, yeah. very based in Red Pilled. Absolutely. I just, uh, what do you mean? Like, is he a normal guy? Because that's what I think based in Red Pilled <laughs> is. Personally. Yeah, is he, a, is, he a, is he an intelligent... He, Honestly, Mr. He seems like a smart, really, really, really smart uh, guy with a lot of common sense, in my opinion. Old Mr. Beast. That's a dying yeah. thing in today's day and age, common sense. That's yeah. what I think red pill shit is, man. It's like, and common sense is one of those things that's honestly dying too hard these days. Like, it's just, it's it's like, I, I, feel like, I feel like when you, again, it goes back to like the whole social media and like YouTube and everything. Everything is like, so either like one side or the other, and it's so it's so hyper towards one. You have to either be this exact stereotype of one absolute side or the other one. You can't just be one of those people that's like, maybe y'all both suck. Okay. Maybe y'all are both too fucking extreme for me. You can't just like have common sense and take like bits and pieces. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're like one of those disgusting century types, you know, you, you have, so you have the to scary either... part. And the scariest part about talking about common sense and being like, well, I wish more people would have common sense. It's like, Oh, that means you think you're voting for Trump, aren't you? You know, it's like no, it, it immediately like, puts you in a box. You know, that, you could either you yeah. could either be like Donkey, all right, be like fuck Sonic Frontiers, or you could be like LS Mark, like you know, Sonic Frontiers is kind of shitty. It's kind of good too. It's, I'm a little <laughs> lukewarm on right, it. Yeah. Or you could be like me, no, where no it's one like can get mad. Yeah. No, no, but that's the problem. Everyone gets f***ing mad when you do that because you're like, yeah, you're not no, confirming yeah. the bias, you know? Like, you either have to have, like, because here's, here's the two types of people on the internet. They're like, yo, Sonic Frontiers, it killed my family. Or you could just be like me. It's like, you know, I thought it was pretty good for a Sonic game. Like, I don't really have high expectations or anything. You know, as long as he goes fast, that's pretty much, you know, every book. As every, long as he goes yeah. fast. <laughs> Yeah. As long as he's blue still. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as it's blue and he goes fast and, you know, there, there's a, there's the words Green Hill Zone. I'm happy. But you can't be in the middle. You can't be like, yeah, I'm kind of for it, but it's got problems. No, th then you just get, like, demonized by every side. You can't, you can't be in there. You can't objectively give something a review. Come on now. No, you can't. Do you see that in Mark's background? <laughs> <laughs> fell off the couch and just missed <laughs> smashed it. <laughs> was that was that arcade Zoom machine in on that in the when back the podcast there. is going up? This is Sonic the Fighters, fittingly. Um, I is that like an official one? Over from, yeah, that's from 1996. I got it chipped Brother. over recently. Uh, I bought this like two years ago, and it's been in like a friend's garage since I live in Ireland, and I couldn't get it shipped to there. But uh, <laughs> now that I'm in in, uh, in America, I got I had to hire a moving company to move it all the way across the country for me. Uh, but no, it's it's official. I think it's like uh, 
this game came out in uh, Japan under the name Sonic the Fighters, which is like a mistranslation. And then whenever they brought it to uh, like the Western market, they changed it to Sonic Championship, and it didn't do very well. So I have the Championship version, which is probably the the rarer one I hear. But uh, it's pretty cool. Damn. The game's not very good, though. Well, I mean, obviously it's not good, but like... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the like... The novelty of it is what I get, yeah. Yeah, it's like the, people come over, it's like, damn, that's a Sonic Fighters game? That's good. Yeah. Like, yeah, and, th- and then they're like, can we play it? And you're like, no, no, don't. No. don't How does it compare to Sonic Frontiers? <laughs> mm. <laughs> the graphics are better, I'll say that. There's no pop-in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So- Sonic Frontiers is like, the Sonic has cataracts in the game, so like he just doesn't really see anything until it comes close. I'm surprised. The, the, I saw Sonic fans like making posts about that, being like, yeah, you think this game's bad because it has pop-in? Well... So does Zelda Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, and it's like I saw somebody okay compare. Here. I saw somebody compare GTA V's like open world to like Frontiers, and it's like that also has open like pop. And I'm like, hold on there, Chief. GTA is also rendering an entire world too. Yeah, like come on, it was also like ten years old. <laughs> yeah. The, the, well, I mean, the the Sonic Frontiers pop in was really really bad because like. When I was playing it on, like, the PlayStation 5, I'm like, damn, I'm going to play it on the next, like, the best version. And then, like, oof. Like, when we're talking about popping, guys, we're talking, like, maybe, like, this is the distance between the item popping up and me. I'm not even f***ing with you. Like, I'm Sonic. That's the rail popping. And this is the the figurative distance between us. Like, you really have to... You'll be, like, homing attacking something. And as you're homing attacking, the next thing that you have to, like, go towards will just pop in right in front of you. So you got to even, like, plan your route. Because yeah. you can't even see, like, what's in front of you. And it's funny, for a game that doesn't actually even render anything, like, other than the fucking No, it's rails. all, like, empty open worlds, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they got, like, these big-ass enemies, which I guess were, like, you know, they're... they're... I-, I was told that they were, like, mind-bogglingly challenging enemies. I'm like, nah, dude, just run up no, the blue yeah. rings and, and you win. <laughs> like, no, Yeah, they're all built around, like, one basic mechanic, like, oh, grind up this rail to get to his, like, Fias, and then just kill him in a couple of hits. Yeah. It's not... I don't know. I, they put a lot of focus on combat in that game, and for what I fucking got, hated the voice acting it. for that game. I hated Sonic's. Vo- I hate Sonic's voice actor. It's like I, I don't know what like. It's like somebody who's just too bored to like go into the like. It's it's like the Bayonetta three chick, like the one that just got fired. If she was like still hired on yeah. and paid, absolutely fuck all. Like guy did not care about working Sonic. Like every day. and you know the thing that pisses me off. It reminded me of Heavy Rain. Do you guys you guys play the game Heavy Rain ever? No, I did. Okay. Yeah. So, Umbi, nope. uh, do you remember in Heavy Rain, the audio was f-ed the whole game through? Do you remember that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, for those of you guys who didn't know, Heavy Rain when it launched, you could literally hear peaking. Like the character was. They were. Th- this is how. This is the audio quality of the entire voice acting. Like the guy was literally f-ing sucking off the microphone. No joke. They did not work hard fixing it. Like there's this beginning section where your kid gets missing. I don't know, people, spoiler alert, bro, it's the first five minutes of the fucking game, and it's also 20 years old. Some of y'all watching here are actually younger than the game's release date, so I don't want to fucking hear it. The game, so you're finding your kid, Sean. Bro, every time you press the word Sean, the mic peaks, and it pisses me off, because even as a fucking younger kid, right? Like, not Sean! Kid, like, yeah, it's like, Sean! It's like, dude, it's like YouTube voice acting 101. <laughs> and then it can't, it, it's just the one voice actor. It's just the one guy, I swear. The main the main character. Not even a side character. The main character's audio is fucked. <laughs> so it's not even like, oh, this guy's like off screen. No, it's you have to hear this fuck the whole way through. And I'm like, and, and you know the best part? They didn't even try to fix it for like the remasters whatever no it's just dark shit the whole way through and 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 this is what i don't understand about this game too like i talked to somebody who finished it 20 times because there's like a ton of endings why does it even exist once you know the the main revelation of the plot why would you go through 20 times again it's not like the end changes what's wrong with you it's not like the David Cage game actually changes on you. And that's like, th- th- literally, I have like a love and hate relationship with this guy. I, fucking, I couldn't stand Heavy Rain at all. And then I fucking love the Detroit Become Human game because I'm like, oh, damn, this is kind of interesting. I finished that game in like a whole day. I was like, I just drew no life to start to finish. But like, no, any, anytime it comes to the movie games, that's like the experience. So, yeah, the whole Sonic Frontiers voice acting, it is like without a doubt, it reminded me so much of the worst triple a video game that i've ever goddamn seen when it came to like just the quality and i'm like how do you fuck I it up i assume it was like i have to assume it was recorded like during covid because 
the, the the mic quality was even like different between characters. It didn't. It started awful. I hated uh, I hated Sonic's voice most of all. Yeah, I, I agree on that. It's way too deep. For, well, for, for for the way he looks, it, it really felt like he was recording it on his iPhone like this. They just sent him the lines. He's like, "Yeah, sure. Let me send it back to the studios in Japan." Yeah. Do you know that? Do you know that movie, My Talking Cat, by any chance? Or have you guys ever seen that movie? Yes, no. I, I, I saw the JonTron video. <laughs> okay, that's what uh, it. Okay, so here's the fun thing. I told you guys on the podcast. It about nuts. Eric. Can, Caleb Nux. Did I ever talk about um, the guy Eric Roberts at all? Ever? I don't think no. so. No. Okay. So, okay. You guys remember the Dark Knight? You watched that movie, right? All of us. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the mob boss in that movie, in the gray suit? Mm-hmm. Okay, no. that guy is Eric Roberts. Okay, here I'll show I'll show you guys who it is. All right, look, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you guys like an actor. Okay, this is the most like prolific actor I've ever seen in a fucking like in Hollywood. He's actually a goddamn legend. Here I'm gonna show you guys will actually remember his face as soon as I show it to you. We have we have talked about this before, yeah. Do you remember this guy? Anybody know who this guy is? The screen's loading. Wait, wait, loading. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, he's in yeah, like yeah, every yeah. daytime fucking TV show there is. Brother, he's yeah. in everything. Mark, you see him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you know who okay. This man, his career is so wild. He'll be in the Batman. Okay, with Christian Bale, and then like his agent will come in. Hey, Eric, uh, we got a uh, we got this other banger movie coming up. It's called a uh, Human Centipede Three. <laughs> Are you down to shoot that? <laughs> and then he's like, "Sure, why not? I guess it pays." And then and then it's like, "Hey, we got another deal." My talking cat. This man's acting is so like hit or miss. He could either be the greatest actor ever and like Batman, like absolutely nail the role, or apparently be so wasted. That when it came to my talking cat, from what I heard, he was like literally out of his mind. He was like wasted. He literally woke up during hangovers to do these scenes and shoot. Like he literally voice overed it on his like phone and just sent those off on iMessage. And he's like, here you guys go. There, there's my job. Bro, Let me collect if, my check. If I, w- if I went from the Dark Knight to my talking cat, I would also be wasted all the time. What is this Bro. movie? A talking cat? What? Bro, he doesn't even need to. The thing is, he just takes any role. Like any job that gets thrown his way, he'll just do it. Like and I and I kind of respect it. Like he has probably the most because you go onto his IMDb page, guys. I've never seen that many pending credits in my life. Like we're talking just like like you go onto this dude's IMDb IMDb page, it's like three pages of just pending projects, pre production during filming. I'm like, damn, this guy's a, he was in that's movies. A, that's impressive. That's like no. really impressive. No, he's like, he's literally like, and, and apparently I heard he's like a super duper nice guy. He's like Julia Roberts' brother. And it just like, it literally works in everything, anything. Like, dude, we could literally go over there and like ask him, hey, do you want to be part of the podcast and hunt ghosts? He'll be like, hell yeah, dude, let's go. And does the check clear? Holy shit. Does it? Oh, hell yeah. 50 up. bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 97 upcoming projects. What the dude, fuck? Dude, I know. Dude, and some of them are the fun. Dude, some of them are the best. <laughs> some Space of them are shirts. just. He's just like cashing two thousand dollar checks. Yeah, the, the, the basically <laughs> what it is. It's like it's like you know Saul These Goodman. Don't sound like real movies. No, this is net worth. The, dude, they are though. That's the best. Two part. million. Uh, Trying to read it not like City Rush three, like uh, Flight seven hundred four. Like what are these <laughs> like titles? Alone to that. It sounds like wrong dude, for right. It sounds like the yeah. soft corp. <laughs> Oh, but 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 uh, but he but he is like genuinely just one of like the he's like he's just so I've never seen somebody with so many acting credits and like this man's face is all over sci-fi he you know it's at one point I think in the eighties this man almost won like an Academy Award like a dude was nominated for one everything it's like surprisingly the most amazing it's like he's had some bangers. And then he's just like, got to take every role imaginable. I have no idea why. It's not even like he owes somebody money. It's not like they've got crazy blackmail on him. It's not like this dude was the most visited person on the Epstein flight logs. No, he just does it because he feels like doing it. And I'm like, I got to respect a man for that, man. Like, he, apparently, I've, I've like, uh, I've been re- I, like, I was researching all the people that work for him, like all the PAs. And like, you know, the apparently this dude needs like, goofy ass like looney tunes level cue cards like they have to write this dude's lines and like in crayons no like font size 96 comic sans oh my like, god just fucking put that shit up because <laughs> he does not remember the lines at all for any of these roles and i fucking love it for that dude it's just 
he's like he's like the guy you want to hire when like you want a somewhat like good looking name on your film like real that's it because apparently it's like it used to be like samuel l jackson like that dude will like she's like I'm in Marvel movies. Also, I did snakes on a plane because fuck it, why not? Right? Like, <laughs> I guess the ch- so he's got to pay for the mansion somehow. It's like it's like Toby Turner, man. Like, you know, the only thing I recognize from Tobuscus now is like the movie Smiley. You guys remember that? Mm-hmm. No, Smiley, dude. I you love how much random stuff you know. It's amazing. He dude, liked one of my tweets last week, old Toby Turner. Dude, to- Toby, Toby's on a Toby's on his like fucking red pill arc, bro. <laughs> we should get him on the podcast. I wouldn't mind. Yo, I, I listen, that that dude is I, like. I could probably get him on, dude. To, Toby, Toby is a Toby is like a YouTube. There was a moment people who are watching this got to remember. It used to be PewDiePie versus Tobuscus, not PewDiePie versus oh, dude, I, Mr. I, Beast. I fucking loved Toby Turner so much. It was crazy when I yeah. first started like looking at YouTube. He was the first big gaming wild. YouTuber that popped in because this was like during the era of like Happy Wheels. You know, like every channel, like. Let me let me explain how easy YouTube was back in the day for anybody watching. You wanted to fucking live in a nice mansion in Los Angeles? You make a Happy Wheels video. You make it every day, okay? Does you does it have to be good? No. You just have to scream. That's all you have to do. That's pretty much I mean, the to, meta back. To be fair though, you're describing Five Nights at Freddy's arc also. I mean, there's there's been a yeah. lot of these moments. Yeah, but see the problem and with stopping that, the train in GTA. Yeah. Thanks Let's for reminding. Thanks for reminding Let's me of real, the dude. Lispy Jimmy arc. You <laughs> no, no, but like, but see, a lot of channels do die that way too. Because like, there are so many of those. I remember like back during the FNAF shit, they were like, "Yo, Muda, you want to make FNAF videos?" And I'm like, like we were sitting in like a well, Skype I mean, it's, chat. It's, it's ironic you're saying that a lot of those channels do die though. When we're talking about Tabuscus, whose channel kind of died though. No, I mean Tabuscus was like oh, there was also a lot yeah, of it, other litany of that die for a different reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there was a there was like the whole like sexual assault stuff that kind of came in and then like the guy just stopped uploading and he like he left for a little bit. The guy went like a little cra- don't get me wrong, he was like heavily into the happy wheels like like the you know general gaming rotation bullshit and that doesn't last forever, right? Like kids grow up after a certain period of time. I remember when like back in the Skype groups they were like you want to do FNAF content and they would just like there would be these like YouTubers just sharing like the next FNAF like fan game that they would find on like this shady ass website and they would play it for five minutes. Easy guaranteed like viewership. And I'm like I'm like the reason I never could get into it was like, yo, it never scared me. Like anybody that got scared by FNAF. Yeah. I had to like maybe you should be medically assessed. I had one guy try yeah. to try to tell me that FNAF was as scary as like Silent Hill or like Resident Evil. I'm like, all right, brother, you can lie to your kid fan base. That's fine. Like, feel free. They're embryos, but like, brother, <laughs> you can't tell me this shit is scary. Like, you're sitting there getting scared by Chuck E. Cheese characters. Miss me with any of that shit. Come on. Yeah, now the whole fan base has turned around and been like, "Yeah, it's not scary, but we're into the lore now. You know, it's all about the lore." Yeah, what? Lore? Had, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to. I, I hate making like gameplay videos, so I, I, I instead try to like make different kind of videos about like topics revolving around these franchises. So a couple like a month ago, I made a video reading every single Five Nights at Freddy's book, and there's like 22 of them. So I, I gave myself a month to read all the books. You're fucking with and, me. Uh, there's 22. Yeah, I've got, there I've got is an insane amount of right now. I can pull them more. On. I mean, Wendigoon what? made like an hour long video talking about Five Nights at Freddy lore. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, like I, I, Matt Pat made uh, four hundred videos about Five Nights at Freddy. <laughs> He's made a whole career on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. The, it's a thing where, like, I, I had to constantly, like, read a book, then go to my friend and be like, okay, this is what I've written about this book. Is this accurate to the lore going on? Because it's all, like, context clues. You have to, like, look for certain phrases that are, like, repeated throughout the books and go, like, oh, that means this is what's really happening, uh, like, by the end. And if you get that wrong, you are going to get your fucking, like, shit kicked in in the comments, you know? So I constantly had to, like, fact check to make sure the videos wasn't misrepresenting Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> That sounds laborious. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, you have to, you have to fact check your FNAF video. Yeah, I, uh, I wonder if I could find it real quick. I had, Did uh, it do well? My, my, yeah, I, it, it got like seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, views, okay. and the fan base seemed to like it. But it was a thing where I was like, I was talking to my friend by the end of reading them all, and I was like, okay, this is what I've written. Is this fine? And they're like, 
I got to bring a friend in on this to explain this to you. <laughs> I got to bring an astrophysicist from I got a guy. <laughs> I need to get dreams. Yeah. dreams. I got a like FNAF oh guy. My, my animatronics <laughs> guy. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is literally all the messages. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no. It's too bright. Uh, maybe this is all the messages. of My uh, man got a fucking MIT grad Lord. to look through this. Oh Holy shit. God. That's a doctoral thesis, <laughs> brother. <laughs> this is insane, bro. Oh, my God. That's, that's all Five Nights at Freddy's lore they had to explain to me just for the for just for the books. Man, like halfway into that, I would have just stopped looking at the Discord chat. I would have been like, out. I'm like, yeah. No, they were typing yeah. it. Now I was like, all right, I'm going out to dinner. I'll read this when the I get back. The beauty is, by the time someone has to do this. Someone has to make like a four hour video talking about Five Nights at Freddy lore, and for just part of it, say the most outlandish thing that is not at all accurate, and just see how many comments like have that timestamp. No, actually. Well, actually, at two thirty-one, you mentioned purple guy. It's actually green yeah. guy. Yeah. He's actually not purple. Just his <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, that's that's. Uh, I mean, that th listen, th those FNAF lore videos are are dedicated. Here, when you have a fan base like the FNAF fan base, and I have to be really careful with my wording here because I can be very offensive and like. When you have a fan base as dedicated like the FNAF ones, okay, that can identify every pertinent detail of their franchise, very difficult to jump in and, and offer. Any, like, I would never risk a FNAF lore video. A, because I don't, I don't really care that much about, like, unless FNAF had, like, some crazy shit about, like, you know, some, unless FNAF was, like, super mature, like, behind the scenes, maybe I'd care about it. But also, it's like, it's damn, not. I don't want to be... It's not yeah. I don't I don't want to be it's risking. Not. It's like it's dark. Like I remember there was one I made a video once um, well, kids dying basically it, right? like... disproving every Matt Pat theory of twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I watched a lot of his FNAF ones and they yeah. they kind of boil down to it's like this is this this child was eaten by one of the animatronics. Like, you know, that that's like the dark part of the lore. You know, from what my perspective, I don't know. I'm, don't don't kill me, FNAF fans. But my biggest complaint with FNAF is that there are too many lore inaccuracies in the FNAF. That's that my problem. True. I which can agree a, with that. Which is a highly produced part of it's the a big FNAF problem. universe. You know that that always wilds me out too. It's like when any of these fan bases, like if you ever watch their like pornographic material, it is some of the highest quality I Pixar don't. shit that I, I. I mean, I I've seen it from time to time just to judge the quality of it. Like the 3D works is on there. Your with works. I 100% of it. Dude, I, honestly, Bro, it's such this, filthy shit that I feel like I am going to hell for it. But, like, dude, you're so right. Overwatch, you're a that's Overwatch's a children's video game. game might be bad. The game might be trash. However, but, there are some talented fans. Dude, Yo. think about, like, think about just the Overwatch community. Like, you make so much <laughs> these characters. It's such high quality. It's like, damn, this guy could have been hired by Pixar, but he's sitting in his home. <laughs> To like Tracer likes his Overwatch too. Character. To be fair though, he's probably making more money. It depends on how they monetize <laughs> it. I'm, I wonder if like there's only fan. I wonder if people have made like parody only fans of like video game characters and they're just like going at it, like making like adult content around it. You know, that, well, that's I know hope. There I mean, are some I very successful Patreons for you know hentai artists. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like it's just like that whole market in general. It was like the whole like like pyrocynical. Um, Pyrocynical does the hentai shit? No, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking, no, no. Oh. I was like, I've been, I've been following too much of Pyro, but like, damn, if he's like, I can understand why the Pet Scott video isn't going to be fucking coming out or anything anytime soon if he's into the hentai shit. Pet Scott 2, when? No, he, the, the, any, anytime you come across like these fan bases, it always baffles me. Like, yeah, well, the game isn't good, but like, yo, they just, it's surviving literally with the adult material. Cause that's the only thing about Overwatch. Like, Overwatch 2 came out. And I'm pretty sure, like, most of the living world has forgotten that the game even exists anymore. Because it's like, oh, yeah, wow, they made a sequel to Overwatch, kind of. Um, it's here. Uh, the game still sucks. All right, good night. <laughs> but you just described Pokemon. <laughs> okay, but there's no, there's, oh, if, what am I saying? Of course there's Pokemon. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I was about to go, there's none. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, Pokemon's different. Pokemon literally is, like, a bunch of, like, Pokemon is literally Stockholm Syndrome for gaming, okay? Let's not even pretend. Like, it's literally people that just cannot admit that they can... It's literally a community of people that cannot take an L. That's all it is, all right? Like, it's just the largest community of gamers that cannot admit that they are wrong about their franchise. 
Like that's there's all. a lot of thing. those communities. I, I don't even think that they're all like stubbornly not admitting they're wrong. It's like they all hate to buy Pokemon games to say it's not like in the old days when I wanted to run around with my Pikachu. Then why buy it, you dumb fuck? Why? Why do you? No. Here's the process. You got to go to the fucking store. You got to give them your card. You got to swipe the card. You got to buy the. Fucking... Why? Why go through that effort? Yep. Why are you doing Preach. this? It's like, listen, Preach. as a as a Halo fan, I love Halo, but I'm not oh. buying anything Halo related, dude. The three four three keeps f-ing up my franchise. You don't see me going out to the store buying f-ing Halo, Halo Infinite. You don't even see me downloading the game because of the updates. I, I've already, I've already accepted they don't give a shit. You know, Why I'll would tell I you where we need to go, Muda. What? We need to go to the three four three headquarters. And what do we do at the three four three headquarters? Oh God! Pay dude. him a visit. I say we pay. I would go to the three four three headquarters and just take a giant ass shit on their doorstep and just point at him no. and be like that. No, no, no. That is better than the game of the year that you guys are making because they don't even care. Dude, they Halo I was going to be nice show. to them and see if I could... I, I mean, I, I would have made them cookies them. if they made a halfway decent game. Brother, you go to three... Listen, the Halo TV show, Paramount, they fucking ass-fucked it, okay? No, that was no, terrible. That, that, that was... <laughs> yeah. That was egregious. That was fucking terrible. <laughs> that was the worst TV show. Out of, and this is the thing. It, it was fucking bad. Cause, cause, you know the worst thing? It's like all those TV studios are like, well, gamers don't care about TV. No, we do! You just... You, f- you you want you want a space offer? Just get the Mass Effect rights. I would have watched a Mass Effect TV show. Shit, that would have been awesome. But not a Halo. You didn't, eat- dude. The fact that I seen Master Chief butt ass naked within the first ep- within the first few like just a season of Halo, it already shows me they don't even care. Like this dude just straight up like shows his ass cheeks out to me. You he just the- crying about mommy. Yeah. Dude, like, it's so Mark, stupid. Mark, did you ever think you were going to see Master Chief's ass cheeks? Officially, not unofficially, officially. This isn't a porno. This is a live television show. This has been in production since the fucking Xbox VCR. This is Pablo Schreiber's it. ass. Is this real? Yeah. Yes. Darryl yes, you can see that? Master Chief's ass. And you we've never turn... even seen his fucking face through like 10 games. Safe, so... You gotta turn safe search off. <laughs> We saw like an, a silhouette in the legendary ending of, of Halo, 4, Halo 4. And yeah. that's the I only thing you saw. How salty you guys are. It makes me Dude, so I happy. I hate it. Like, I literally, nothing, no games or fandoms really make me mad. I really don't care. I stay out of it mostly. But my God, I love Halo so much. The books are so good. 343 books are even good. The ones that they made, they're solid. It's just the, the game, Infinite, was good. And now it sucks ass. And the f-ing TV show was the worst TV show that has ever been made. I hate these online games. Like, do you remember back when we bought Halo? They gave us the whole ass game on a disc. Yeah. Firefight, theater, like yep. f- multiplayer was complete. Custom. And a Everything cool little was there. pamphlet in the f-ing case. Yeah. Either, the, With I, colors and information. We, we have, like, we you literally could sh- see what the gu- what caliber the guns were. And now you can't, you don't even get that anymore. They cheaped out. The game isn't even done halfway into yeah. it. Like, bro, people want to shit on Donkey for calling out Sonic Frontiers, okay? Sonic Frontiers is a more complete f-ing game than Halo Infinite was. And I'm not even memeing here. Okay? Easily. 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 The Sonic community wants to get mad this at the This is coming from review. Caleb, the guy that hasn't even played Sonic, but he knows Bro. it's more complete than Halo. I watched the Donkey video, and I've been up to date on the Twitter drama. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit aware. I'm a little bit aware. Listen, so the Sonic community I got my toes get, in the water. The Pokemon community can get mad. The Sonic community can get mad. Bro, we've been consistently ass-fucked for two generations of consoles, okay? We haven't had good fucking games, okay? Halo yeah. 5 Guardians yeah. comes out, ass-fucked there, too. All right, Halo and ass fucked there too. You know what? The mm-hmm. only good thing was the Halo Wars. But you know what? I don't play Halo to do real time strategy shit, guys. Yeah, I don't those were play. Good. Yeah. I, I'm I'm playing there for the shooter. If that sucks, the cutscenes too were really good. Yeah, the cutscenes. The, the Halo Wars cutscenes were fucking. I played Five Nights well. at Freddy's for the lore. Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> when, when's the last what's um, the last five nights of freddy's game you played nox be honest i have never played a five nights of freddy's game bullshit everyone one, here one has Markiplier played it video and that was it mark what's the last i streamed the, last the uh the most recent one what was the uh, recent security one? breach the most recent one, security breach yeah, yeah, yeah i, I streamed that one that was funny yeah, i was terrible. eating spaghetti i almost vomited 
it's like I, literally unfinished. Yeah. Well, Did you I, vomit I, from the fear? No, I, I just uh, swallowed spaghetti wrong. You know, <laughs> um, you know that game was so unfinished that like every time yeah. I play a video game, I can like deconstruct the programming based on how the AI acts. Who that that through the the AI and security breach probably the easiest bad. shit to absolutely break. Oh my god, it's so bad. Especially Bro. a game like uh, that that does AI in the same vein really well as Alien Isolation. That game is great. That game is actually that's I'm such a good game. That. It's so scary and it's so unpredictable. But at the same time, you know when you're going to make a mistake, and you know there's going to be points in which you're going to be chased by a monster. It's like they say they could have easily just taken cues from that, but instead they just made it like, um, like a children's game. <laughs> Let's be real, well, like, it's a children's it, game. It, it, yeah, it also it's has a children's to be a game because kids don't like kids aren't going to be willing yeah. to learn like the the like. The, there's one kids game that like I just cannot play because it's the AI f- me all the time. You know the game Hello Neighbor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is uh, some yeah, of the most yeah. insane shit. That motherfucker, that the 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 weird pedophile enemy in that game just knows exactly where this kid is all the goddamn time. It just gets so <laughs> unfun because like kids get scared by it, but I'm like this this serial killer like clown is just running around like his because he's only got like three three rooms in his like weird ass house, like two places to hide. And I swear every time I play the game, he just knows exactly where I'm at. I'm like, I just don't even care. This yeah. game's this game's just bullshit. bullshit. Like the AI, yeah, it's just bullshit in me. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's why, like, these yeah. kid-oriented games just cannot... Because there's no, like, substance to Either it. Either way. Like, yeah, they're, they're all... They're, to be fair, like though, a, if it, like... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, you go ahead. If, if you had a kid... If you if a kid played Alien Isolation and, like... I mean, that's basically child abuse. Let's be real. Yeah. If a kid was... A kid to play... If I played that when I was a child, I would have never... I would have turned out very differently. I probably would have been very afraid of ductwork, at least. My uh, uh, my my aunt won't let her kids play games at my house anymore because they were talking about horror games. <laughs> no, they, she doesn't because she she got mad at me over this shit. Because uh, they make were, them play Visage. Talking, well, they were talking about horror games, right? So they they loaded up FNAF Security Breach, and I'm just sitting over there with like just the beer in my hand. I'm like, these kids yeah. are like trying to get scared. I'm like, hold on, let me let me look, let me let me dust off a real horror game for you kids. Ooh. So I go so I go up to the closet. I dig out my old PlayStation Four. And I just hook it up to the TV, and on there is PT Silent PT? Hills, the demo. Oh, bruh. I load it up, new file, and I give them a controller. I'm like, you kids figure this out. And, like, they start the game off, and it gets to the point where, like, Lisa's hunting them down. I have never seen the fear of God in children. <laughs> when they turn around, and Lisa just flies right into the fucking screen. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and they're trying to yeah, figure that's out scary... the loops. Oh. Well, she freaked out because she was like, "When, when, when you go to the bathroom, obviously you guys know that there's like the fetus in the in the in the sink." And, and I'm like, "All right, that's freaking you out." Listen, these kids are actually playing a real horror game, okay? This bitch is hunting them down. All like, I gave them that. I'm like, I'm so sick and tired of these kids playing these FNAF security breaches. I'm like, you play a real horror. That's thing. All horror games now for kids. When kids think of horror games, I think of like that, or like Bandy and the Ink Machine, or like these these horror games that come out that are catered towards children, like Poppy Playtime or whatever. Yeah, it's like the new, uh, it's the new gold mine. Fortnite's <laughs> Halloween update, <laughs> dude. Yeah, pop, poppy you know, playtime, dude. I, I see these huggy wuggy plushies in every goddamn store in every country I'm in. Okay, I know. it's unbelievable. I was dude, just in that... Italy. You have these people in Venice, right? That they're selling like the Venetian masks and mm-hmm. huggy wuggy plushies. <laughs> it's like I don't understand how it's such a market. Like the first coming to Venice are going to be picking up these little huggy wuggies. I, uh, I, I, I you can you can tell that you can tell a franchise is like a horror franchise made for kids because you're right like the moment that Poppy's Playtime should happen like I remember I finished the video where I like criticized the people for like I think stealing like there was like Poppy Playtime drama and I'm like oh I'm more into that I want to hear about like some of the beef going on between these game developers fuck the game who gives a shit and then as soon as I made that video I fly out to California and like as soon as I met Santa Monica Pier bro you go to these like stalls and it's like squid game for the kids or like poppy's playtime like damn this is how popular it is like it used to be like among us everywhere now it's just all like poppy's playtime there's still among us everywhere to be fair among Mm -hmm. us is still huge do you guys see among us vr oh yeah yeah you guys play it 
I didn't play no, it. Not yet. Dude, it's the biggest daycare in the world. The first experience I ever had signing on to it was just like the ear piercing screams of this child. I have never wanted to scream the word shut the fuck up so hard to a bunch of kids. Like, it was so they introduced voice chat into it, right? Like for the um, uh, for the for the interrogation or whatever, like the deliberation phase. And uh, as soon as it starts, it's just fucking high pitched screaming at one another. Either it's a high pitched screaming from kids. Or it's just, like, the nonstop, like, barrage of racism from the other side. Like, there's just no in-between. Like, I'm just kind of sitting over there. Classic gaming. Dude, in, it is. In defense... All right, all right. Well, in their defense, though, okay? You played in a public lobby. You played in a public lobby. What did you expect? I mean, I mean, the public lobby experience is what you expect. Like, I don't want to play with YouTubers that are going to be out-screaming one another just for just to get into a Okay, clear. all right. So, so the issue with playing YouTubers is, like, it's too serious. It's way too serious. It's like, well, if I don't win this game, I'm just telling my audience I'm stupid. So I will instead <laughs> be like extremely sweaty. Oh, well, well, dude, the YouTube lobbies are the fucking worst for Among Us. So so, dude, I that's literally my filter for some of the YouTubers that I will never talk to in my entire life. Like, what people don't understand is like the Among Us that you see for like five minutes on a channel is way different than the two hours of recording that we do because that two hours of recording is the most passive aggressive clip chimping side of Among Us that you will ever fucking see in your life. I yeah. literally there are YouTubers that I'm like I, I literally would like I want to ask them like how old are you by the way like 35 years old and you're screaming like this on a fucking kids game you absolute fucking monkey stop fucking doing like literally just gets to the point where it's too annoying and you're right they just over sweat these among my favorite among us games have been with like charlie and and the only reason it's because nobody takes it seriously like we're all just like playing this fucking kids game obviously we're all lying to each other it's like a game of the worst poker players in the world like your tells are so obvious and that's what it is but like when you got like the the crazy like twitch metas and like well it used to be like the among us metas those are just like some of the most like annoying lobbies to ever jump into, which is why the public experience Nux is so much better because at least you're dealing with like, you know, the actual player base, right? Like you're dealing with people who are, you know, either, either fucking full on like racists or like straight up like children at a daycare. Like it, it's just yeah. that it's nothing. Two sides of the same coin. Really? That's the dream. That's the dream. They're, well, they're not, they're not trying to get like gameplay clips. They're straight up trying to lie to you. That's the best part. And they're dude, the kids that try to lie to you, it's the sweetest thing that I've ever seen. Like these kids are so like, for these me, kids... what's so funny is like, you know, that some people, you know, throwing for content, like, yeah, I, I, I remember there was like this whole drama at one point where people, people were telling me that when they would play with toast, they would throw, so that they could make it into Toast's videos. Right? Like, because that's great promotion for them. If they were the one fooled by Toast's 4,000 IQ imposter play, well, then they are, you know, they're going to make it to their to Toast's channel. and the high, They're going to take up the screen time in Toast's next video. Dude, I don't understand how cucked you can be because I'm so hyper competitive in these games that even if it meant like I could get like 50 million subscribers, I'm not losing to anybody if I can't if I can't help it. No, 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 no. I'm fuck. I'm not throwing <laughs> anything, bro. I'm winning that shit. I'm winning it with blood all over my face, dude. I don't give a fuck for playing Siege or Among Us. I'm winning the fucking game. <laughs> no loss yeah, on well. my end, Jesus. <laughs> I, I mean, that, but that's just I like the competitive. It. I respect. No, you, you got to be competitive, dude, in these games. I'm sorry, like I'm not losing to I anybody. I agree, you got to be competitive, team. or else you're not going to enjoy it. But you also like don't cheat. There's been a lot of cheating going on with Among Us lobbies too. You know, <laughs> you just look at people. Look, you, 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 don't, you didn't hear oh. about this. This was such a huge thing. It's like people oh, would yeah, look at you. Cheated Among Us. You look yeah. at your friends' stream to see if they're the Fuck imposter. Oh. So then you you know like you you fake it. You make these sick calls. You right. So th that was a whole. We, we played Among Us a lot, Nux. Would you say yeah. I had a good etiquette when playing? Okay. Caleb, I'll be completely honest. You didn't talk at all. You were just. I, mean, I did talk, but I just didn't. Everyone call. else was so, taking it so seriously, and I was just like, "Yeah, that's not me." You I'm just not the joined bad guy. the call. It was amazing. You would join the call, and you'd be like, "I don't know anybody here, but like, <laughs> you can vote me off if you want to." <laughs> <laughs> My nickname was P Nice. No, 
no, it, it's dude, true. Like, it okay, was. It, it, it's different because like playing with you guys, like all like we're chiller people playing it. I don't think anybody here needs to make an Among Us video at all. I don't think anybody here cares about making an Among Us video. If I make an Among Us video, it's going to be about some fucking brain dead drama or something within their community about somebody going sus a little too much. Or it's just going to be some insane lore video because some Among Us novel came out for the kids or a coloring book. And there was some Yo, little Yo, LS Mark, it. every Among Us novel. Every Among Us novel. There's not an Among Us novel. Among Let me Us Google Among Us. Guides. I, I think there are like physical strategy guides for Among Us I've seen in stores. Oh, you're... Of course, you're I gonna, got some of them. I own them. You're going to get excited, buddy. I just found something that you're into. I just I found a content gold mine for Mark here. Hey, Mark, oh, really? check out some of these, dude. Check this out, dude. Among Us, a traitor Holy in shit. space, dude. Oh, my God. Is that official? Is, There's no I don't way know that's if it's you official, know my, brother. You know what my favorite Among Us did? They, did? they made a film adaptation of Among Us in 1984. It's called The Thing. They spelled imposter wrong. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Traitor in space. Wait, where did they, they spell spelled imposter wrong. wrong. Wait, wait. No, read it. Ten, ten astronauts, an imposter. It's O R. Determined to kill them all. Welcome to the deadliest spaceship of all time. Oh, no. It's like you'd think they'd know how to spell like their own game word. Well, hey, listen. Oh, Diary cool. of an Among Us crewmate. That's <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, Diary wait. of an Among Us crewmate. Yeah, oh. You know there's going to be a Netflix live action Among Us at some point. It's gonna happen. <laughs> what about the Stop. thing? That's basically just Among Us. Yeah. Yes. It, oh, dude, it's an Audible book. Somebody actually. I, I really. I really want to hear this. It's this free. Audible. Yeah. Yeah, but that means I have dude, to download fucking the app. I wonder what's better, Steve Harvey's Audible books or Among Us Audible? Diary of an would, Among Us. I would character. literally listen to an Among Us like audiobook. Here's 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 a Minecraft mishap, dude. Stinky <laughs> Steve. Stinky <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like That's Minecraft? Amazing, dude. Do you think farts are funny? See what I'm happens. getting Stinky Steve. I'm adding that to my collection. <laughs> See what happens in the wonderful world of Minecraft when Steve can't stop farting. Are the creepers and zombies terrified or attracted to Steve's toxic smell? What the f- What? <laughs> what? the way to overcome his flatulent issue? Or will it get the God best of him in the end? <laughs> Find out in this fun new superhero. Oh yeah, other people bought Captain Underpants. Oh dude, it's a whole series. There's more. Wait, wait, the in, it, all right, Captain Underpants was fire though. In, hey, in mm -hmm. Captain Underpants is I the best. I think this show. might be like, better though. Book. Look at that. We got Stinky Steve Part Two. Stinky Steve versus Captain Underpants. Yeah, but Look here's the question one. though: Will the stinky smell aggravate or attract the zombie hordes? That's the question. What is? What is wrong with the burp and fart meta that attracts children? Why does that? Why is that a thing? To be fair, though, a lot of your video is burp and fart meta. You guys ever so, read videos? the emoji adventure? Yeah. <laughs> How like so? you have, you, Tara puts Tara. <laughs> I, I think it's amazing, but the burp That's and the fart same meta author is as Sticky Steve. <laughs> That's the same guy. Oh, yeah, God damn it. Evans. He's a prolific writer. Evans. No, here's about the author. Here it is. P.T. Evans loves Minecraft, pizza, emojis, cats, and fart jokes. When he's not writing or doing author visits, he is training alligators and sumo wrestling. Follow his adventures. This guy sounds like a fucking liar. <laughs> dude, I kind of want to see uh, this guy. No, dude, he's got I a YouTube channel. He's got a YouTube channel. Look at it, dude. It's good, like a... There's no fucking way this photo is real. Customers is... also bought, bought items by Dave Pilkey. Who's Dave Pilkey? That's, oh, that's Dave creepy. Pilkey's the writer of Captain Underpants. Oh, is he? Okay. No, he's a writer of Dog Man, you asshole. Wait, is he? Yeah, Dog Man. Oh, oops. The fuck, Dog Man? Dude, is these are some Dog of the Man's best. Dog the same as. Wait, wait, Dog Man was written by the same guy as Captain Underpants, I think. Really? It looks like the same font. I think you're right. Oh, from the creator. You're right. You're right. Okay. All right. Yeah. There we go. Everything. Yeah, the the customer. Nux is right. Customers also bought those. This is actually like. This is actually like the man's. <laughs> He's oh the God, writer of Dog Man, you dumbass. <laughs> hey, you oh, idiot. It's not Cap oh, <laughs> that's, that's wait a second. quality some Pixar shit. <laughs> oh, my God. How much do you think this book has sold? No joke. Take, take your Five. guesses. It's I think it's one. sold more like ironic Five. copies. 
Yeah, like me. Yeah, like all of us about to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> five. Yeah, I'm about to buy it actually. <laughs> five. <laughs> about five copies. No, Not look at it. 113 ratings. So. And these are verified. Okay, Six year old thinks fair, it's though, hilarious. All right. So, so here's the thing. Like, if, for example, if you look up the highly critically acclaimed um, web novel, uh, that time I got isekai to another world with my truck. Very, mm -hmm. very great, great story. Um, you, you'll see it has like thousands of reviews and it has like millions of views and it doesn't actually convert to real life fans and buyers. This was a, it was a web novel that I wrote with someone as a meme. And, um, like, I don't know. I don't know. Bro, it could be inflated. You, That's all I'm saying. I don't know if it's inflated. Read this review. It literally changed this person's life. Mark, you want to you want to read this for us? Sure. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Sure, why not? Before ordering this, I was depressed, sad, alone. Before I was lonely, I then saw a light one day as I strolled through this website. When I saw a particular thing pique my interest, behold, a small yet very powerful book. I was delighted and pressed order, as I could barely wait to get my hands upon this paper jewel. My few days spent waiting with anxiety over this magical product were well worth it. Today, I went out in a small, on my small humble porch near Dintown and saw a particular little package. I ran inside and tore it open with excitement. I was incredibly delighted at these, sheer, <laughs> at these shears of gold before my eyes, shining like a gem on a king's crown. This book has changed my life, and I follow this book as if it is a Bible. The ways of the Stinky Steve have allowed me to overcome my true fears. Stinky Steve has allowed me to ascend to re relaxation as I have finally find something to guide me. Thank you, Evans. Thank you. That Based. is pretty beautiful. You tell me that doesn't convert to real world fans? That lady, that, that, that's I'm, a real I'm Bible. I'm wiping tears from my eyes. I was I'm wrong. I'm a fan now. That's a real, that's a real life fan. Dude, these that looks kids... like the, the comments you find on like hentai. Not dude, lie. these comments are dude. These like, dude. Honestly, going to the FNAF novel hole is great. Like, there's so many of these like brilliant authors writing these amazing books for. And you know, the best part is like Minecraft is a company. Microsoft does not even care about even bothering to like copyright this. Oh, like, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Just oh, you're not getting going. copyrighted for this, bro. If you get copyrighted for this, they just admitted that they watched or heard of this. Well, it's like it's like the Meat Canyon thing. Remember, like how they copyrighted his Bugs Bunny thing, and it's like, wait, so this is officially lore relevant now? Fucking Bug Bunny fucks Elmer yeah, well, Fudd in the ass. If it gets copyrighted, then doesn't that imply that it's like a replacement of the original content? <laughs> it's like could be because yeah. I, I always I always thought Looney Tunes was some wild, weird shit when I was a kid, and as as I've grown up, none of that has ever gotten normal to me either. That is that is the weirdest era of like cartoons that I've ever had to grow up and watch. I never grew up with like Nickelodeon and shit. We never had it as kids, so I only had like Looney Tunes and Popeyes and all that like old school like eighties, nineties, like seventies cartoons, like black and white. I shit. mean, all all of the old. I mean, think about it. You know, Scooby Doo. They're always hungry. The Mystery Machine has smoke coming out of it every time they open the doors. They're looking for monsters. They eat. Bro, Scooby even snacks. as a kid, Bro. I knew there were potheads. That wasn't they really were like kids. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, they on. were stone. That was yeah. that was the most obvious. Stone. I remember the I remember when like the live action movie came out and my like in like uh, mom's brother just saw like uh, Shaggy, like Matthew Lillard. He's like, oh, this guy is the perfect version of Shaggy. And then it took me a while later to realize why he said that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, right. why is he? He's like, because he saw him like, oh my god, like that's perfect cast. I'm only using like one percent of my power, Scoob. Like, whoa! I was like, oh no way. He's like, oh, this is a perfect casting choice for this guy. Jesus Christ! I'm like, and then it took me a while to realize what he meant by it. I'm like, oh okay, all right. No, they're they're all like, they're all like nut job potheads. It's like watching old school Disney shit now, like just old school Disney, and now I can see all the adult jokes. Finally, you know, as a kid, you're like, oh, shit, I never really realized any of it. But now you're like, oh, OK. I mean, but then again, nowadays, the new Disney shit is so terrible, like the live action crap. I saw live action Lion King and I was just like, man, this is Ugh. this is just this, this is this this is just this is like an AI prompt made this movie again. Yeah, didn't they say they're doing live action Hercules soon and it's going to be a musical oh, inspired they? by TikTok or something like oh, that? No. Oh, yeah. I don't that want sounds to good. Oh, Wait, wait no. You made that up just now. Come on. No. <laughs> He's like, no. This is so sad. Dude, I don't want to alarm you guys, but I have to shit really bad.
I am pretty alarmed. I do too. <laughs> I, I, I do as well. I think we can tie it off after seeing the Hercules. Actually... I actually do. I, yeah, I you, actually... Uh, live action Hercules. I have my... I, have my uh, I don't know if you guys heard it, but like my fucking family from New York just came into my house like 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago. Like started being really loud and People shit. People are ripping my floors up right now, so you can probably hear that in the background too. Are you are you still renovating around your house? Uh yeah yeah okay is it is it like uh you have to make some adjustments for Nick Cotto, the mukbangs that you guys filmed? Uh you dude he destroyed my carpet my them. uh in my bedroom. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's blue with blue talkies. <laughs> he was just eating like, and spreading oh shit God. everywhere. It fucking sucked. Dude, I, dude but, uh, I'm getting hardwood for uh, f- What's that? Those mukbangs are too insane to watch, man. Like, oh, the he's yeah, of food. It's crazy. Ugh. But it doesn't get finished or anything, yeah. right? Like, it just gets thrown away. Most of it. Uh, we we f***ed it up. All the stuff we ordered, we ate. We ate all of it. Damn. There's like five guys in my house though, so. I, I feel I feel like when I see him eat the ramen, I'm like, Ugh. I can only do like a one packet is fine for me. And then he gets to like nine of those, and I'm like. Um, and then they're all like super spicy packets, and I'm like, "Damn, dude, your ass must be like, you must have f- your toilet up though. Like your your plumbing is f- in your house, isn't it?" Yeah, it's ruined. Yeah, <laughs> it's ruined. Yeah. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you all enjoyed today's episode. Ellis Mark is uh, here to discuss. Well, we I I, I feel like we kind of traumatized you a little bit because I don't know if you expected yeah, an hour back. of. He, Start off by showing me rub maps, then nuke maps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You have a podcast, right, Mark? Yeah, yeah. I just podcast started a podcast where I interview different. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, not. No, uh, I, I interview different uh, uh, cartoon creators in the animation industry and other YouTube creators as well. Um, it's called Meeting Halfway. It's on YouTube, okay. Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Hell yeah! Go check it out. Yeah, no, that's pretty nice. Uh, and any notable episodes? Any favorite episodes that you want to kind of bring up to the audience here? Uh, I, I like the most recent one. The audience seems to really like it. Where uh, it's just me and my co-host just kind of talking about uh, like God and like death. Uh, Ooh, no, no guests this time, but uh, we've also done one with the uh, author of Diary of a Wimpy Kid and the creator of Fairly Odd Parents, Butch Hartman. So those are other bro. That's awesome. Like. Hell yeah, that sounds really dope. Yeah, but yeah, um, no, no thanks sick. for having me on. It's it's pretty uh, surreal. I, I remember uh, years and years and years ago, I would watch your uh, your creepy pasta videos. So it's kind of it's kind of surreal being here now. <laughs> Thanks, man. No, it's uh, it's great to have you on, man. And uh, honestly, if you guys want to check out some good content, uh, check out Ellis Mark's main channel and his podcast as well. And if you want to check out our co-hosts here, well, if you want to check out me, Nux, and Oompy, you already know what channels to go out to, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, we've uh, started off well. I mean, now that you told me you watched me for a long time, and I literally the first interaction was rub maps. That's uh. <laughs> I'm going to live with that. Classic. <laughs> Classic. 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 Classic Muda moment. Classic tape. Muda. <laughs> All right. Oh, ladies, yeah. and gen- ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. We are all out.